might regret this video, but <laughs> I'll just do it. <laughs> Hola. Today I'd like to talk about something a little different than usual and that is a trope in BL that happens a lot. There are actually quite a bunch of, you know, tropes in BL that are problematic or just annoying, but today I'd like to focus on the one that seems to be the most problematic and that trope is of course SA, you know, the non-consensual stuff. But I'm not here to talk about how problematic it is. In fact, I want to talk about why I'm not against it or why I don't have a problem with it. I should preface this by saying that in my own life, I'm actually rather conservative, I suppose. But when it comes to art and media, I'm pretty much anything goes. But before I get into the video, I should put out a disclaimer. I in no way, shape or form endorse this kind of behavior in the real world. I'm strictly talking about a type of fiction here. And I want to make it clear that doing stuff without consent is never okay. Ever. With that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about this trope. There are some theories out there on why this is so prevalent, especially in BL. And by saying prevalent, I mean it's really... <laughs> from my personal observation, like this is not based on any statistics or whatever, but I feel like in every second BL story this happens. <laughs> and I'm not even talking about like the darker series. I'm talking about series that are quite, you know, famous in the genre and are supposed to be cute or or wholesome. <laughs> and now this might seem really controversial for outsiders. Some might think it makes the gay community, whatever that is, <laughs> look bad. But I would like to remind people of some things. BL is written mostly by women for women. And the way I see it, the majority of BL works were never meant to portray what it means to be gay or, you know, depict the lives of gay men. So I don't think the intent was to depict the lives of gay men in a realistic manner, you know? I read a lot of this stuff in my time and sometimes I just have to laugh because you just know that barely any man, whether he's gay or not, would act this way in real life. You know, much like in any other manga or anime, it's not the real world. Yeah, just a reminder. <laughs> But in these stories, the characters oftentimes act like female shoujo protagonists. And I should mention here that BL was mostly considered shoujo, you know, just part of this genre in the past. So this is where the genre in BL was born. And a quick look into the past reveals that this trope has been prevalent ever since this genre was established. Just look at Kazeki, which is one of my favorites, by the way. And the question here naturally is why? And my answer to this is it's female fantasy. I think it's no secret or it shouldn't be a secret that a lot of women have this fantasy for themselves, you know, like this fantasy of being assaulted. Ooh. But I really need to stress that this is a fantasy. I promise you, no woman or any person would want to be assaulted in real life. I'm no expert, you know, I'm not a fucking sexologist or whatever, or psychologist. But it seems logical to me that the point of this whole fantasy is giving up control. While this fantasy is obviously controlled by the person in question. Like, you know what I mean? Like, in your head, you can go to the most extreme version of yourself or other people, but you're still in control. You know what's gonna happen and what not. Even if it's the most degrading and disgusting, you know, crazy ass fantasy you can come up with, you're in control. And if you apply this to BL, I think it's the same. It's not really about gay men, it's more about female sexuality, really. And obviously I'm not talking about every single BL out there, but if you look at just the smut, it's a little bit like that. And I know a lot of people actually really do care about the LGBT community and so on. So I'm not talking about you. And so in that sense, I don't think this stuff is harmful at all. Where it becomes a problem to me is when you start fetishizing gay men, 
because that's something that you really shouldn't do. And I don't like this argument that this can be a, a bad influence on the kids, I guess, and I don't know. Because it's the same as saying, oh, video games make people want to blow up schools, blah, blah, blah. And if that's really the case, then like everybody would be going out there, blowing up their schools and, you know, raping people left and right and, you know, because they rape and everybody out here. So we all would be murderers and rapists, you know? But I believe if you're so easily influenced by this stuff, it's an individual problem. If you really feel like the things you consume are starting to influence you or you catch yourself having like weird thoughts and, you know, wanting to test them out or something like that, then that is your responsibility to deal with. And you should stop consuming this sort of stuff and just seek help. In the end, it all comes down to separating fiction from reality. And I don't know if art should ever be moral or immoral. You know, it is what it is. And the thing is that art means something different for everyone, right? You don't have to like it, that's for sure, but that doesn't mean it shouldn't exist. But I think in art, let's just call it art, rape or murder can be depictions of our innermost extreme feelings. And this doesn't always mean like really thinking about murder. This could mean, for example, hating a part of yourself so much that you can create a character and, and, and a story and kill it just kind of as a symbolic way of getting rid of this part within yourself. And this can result in very powerful and cathartic pieces of art, which is also the reason why I'm against censorship in art anyways. And so personally, I'm not totally into this assault fantasy, but I understand it because I also think it has this, not totalitarian in the sense of like, dictatorship style, but it has this sort of total and complete, you know, feeling where you can't get away from it. Like this is meant to be. Obviously that's not how it is in the real world, but if people portray their version or their vision, I should say, of love this way, then I understand how this happens, you know, this someone forcing themselves on you, like into your life and soul. And of course, not every work portrays it the same way, but a lot of them do. And, you know, I, I get it. And so I think this is, you know, you can see it like from this uh, sexual side or from a psychological side. Because if you think about it in a lot of these stories, the the other person, like the victim basically, does end up falling in love with the, you know, <laughs> with the other one. And these are supposed to be love stories, right? Again, like Junjo Romantica. And since they're not real people, just a reminder, and since they're not real people, you could argue that both of these guys had these feelings, so it's not that bad, you know? Because in the end, they're happy. But there are other extreme cases where you can't make this argument anymore. For example, in Killing Stalking, this cursed manhwa. And like to me, this was never a love story at all. It's a psychological horror story. And in that sense, in that sense it's a very good story. But yeah, not a love story and nobody can tell me otherwise. It all depends on the context in which something is framed. And just because something occurs in a story, it doesn't mean the author condones it or anything like that, or that we're supposed to go out and do this stuff as well. So in the end, I think what this comes down to is consciously consuming media and art and what have you. And that's really all I can say about it. Hopefully nobody takes this the wrong way or anything. But yeah, these are my thoughts. It's to, to me, you know, it's it's not that deep. But yeah, you know, obviously I can be wrong. Um, and if I am, you can tell me. <laughs> and who knows, maybe my thoughts will change over time, but yeah. But that is just something I briefly wanted to talk about. And for the next video, 
I think it's probably gonna be the last video and I will end the year on a, you know, happy and light note. Light note. And I'll be doing that by making a video on a <laughs> comedy manga that I've been getting into recently. And also I will make a video where I talk about my favorite manga and anime of 2021. But until then, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.